enemy, this deceiving of the church. When we take the right vessels into the wrong house, go with me in Daniel to the third chapter and the fifth verse, and read with me that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. Now this is exactly the way the mystery of iniquity always works. To bring the worship of an image. In Genesis 1.26, you know, you don't have to turn there. It says, and God said, let us make man in our own image. When man fell, he lost the image of God. I want you to look with me at Romans 1, Romans 1, going to the 21st verse. Because, when, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four footed beasts, and creeping things. This is the fall. This is the fall again. It's the same thing that happened in the garden. It's the same thing that happened in Babylon. It's the same. It's, it's always the same that the vessels begin to worship a different image. The image may change, but the power behind it always remains the same. It is that mystery of iniquity that is established and based in a religious operation coming out of spiritual Babylon. We know that if I change and I said, okay, from now on God is a bird, or God is a four-footed beast, a, a, a calf, in truth, what am I actually saying? What I'm actually saying is if I have the power to make a bird God or to make a calf God, I'm saying, hey, I'm God. Yeah. If I can make it God, then I'm God. So what we're really reading is men that made self God. Now when you change the image of God, like they did, it's not really about changing the image into a four-footed beast or a bird-like creature, because you're not going to you're not going to deceive anybody with that, and there, there's no deception there, at least not in the beginning. That's not the problem. The problem, not the huge things that we would do. The problem in changing the image of God comes from those little things. Especially when we consider the purpose of God. I told you this morning, Jesus said in John 14, 9, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's my whole purpose. Hebrews said in the first chapter and the third verse that he is the express image of the Father. That's his purpose. So what is his purpose? He comes as the revelation of God, but He comes for a purpose. And that purpose, it says in, in Romans uh, uh, 8 and 28, we, we know it well, but since we're there, let's read it. In Romans, the 8th chapter and, and the 28th verse, 
And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called, whom He called, He also justified, and whom He justified, them He also glorified. Jesus comes as the image of God with the purpose of making you the image of Christ. Therefore, what the earth is filled with is the image of God. That's what His intent was in the beginning, and that's what, his, that's what He will have in the end. So, His purpose is the conforming, according to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, And the 18th verse, it says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have perceived mercy, we faint, and we have received mercy, we faint not. God makes it very clear. He said, let me tell you what your ministry is. Your ministry is to be conformed to the image of Christ. Church, your ministry is not to feed the hungry. Your ministry is not uh, to reach the lost. Your ministry is not to heal the sick. Your ministry is to be conformed to the image of Christ. And if we become conformed to the image of Christ, He will feed the hungry. He will deliver the, the captive. And He will reach the lost. And He will heal the sick. That's right. But we want to do it without being conformed. Mm -hmm. This is your ministry. He said in 1 Corinthians 15, 49, You born the image of the earthly. You must must bear the image of the heavenly. It's the purpose of God. It's your ministry. I went the other day, we, we went on and, and uh, got on Facebook, and the purpose of our getting on Facebook, on the internet, is so it would link them to Eden's flow. So if people come and they look at my profile, they know they come to Eden's flow. And the Word of God is there. I went there to look the other day to see what was going on. And here we are on Facebook and some, and some of these people were saying, Let's see how many real Christians there are out there. If you love Jesus, click on this heart. Well, hallelujah. Christianity is not clicking on a heart. These same people uh, uh, talking back and forth one to another. And one of the things it says, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. And, and the same people that are liking this go down the list and they say, uh, my profile is, I believe in spiritists and mediums. And the same people like that. We put it all together and call it Christianity. We worship another image. But I'm not talking about them. That's the big things. Go with me to 1 John. 1 John 3. In 1 John 3, 1 through 3, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, but and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth him, purifieth himself, even as he is pure. What this is talking about, it's talking about the fact that He is pure, He is in me, for the purpose of making me pure. Romans 8 says all things, it's talking about.